Right, welcome. I'm Vern Solberg. Uh, today's tutorial will be focusing on DFM for flexible and rigid flex circuits utilizing surface mount technology. First, we'll look at um, DFM principles for flexible and rigid circuits. Then we'll get into um, focusing on component selection and land pattern development and we'll round everything off with the topic on DFM for SMT assembly processing. In, in regard to principles for DFM, the first order is to establish flex circuit construction types. Then uh, we'll, we will reviews, uh, review the base materials for flexible circuits, as well as protective cover coatings and film variations. Next, we'll study conductor routing and physical physical feature planning, followed by flexible circuit uh, bending and folding guidelines, finishing up with uh, EMI shielding and impedance control. The IPC type one, uh, this is the most common type of flexible circuit consisting of a single conductive layer bonded between two insulating layers. SMT lands when provided are accessible only to one side of the circuit. The single metal flex circuit has proved to be the ideal circuit for dynamic applications. In type two, the type two circuit has two copper conductive layers that utilize a flexible dielectric material as its insulator between each of the copper layers. The base material is furnished with copper foil bonded or deposited onto both sides of the base dielectric uh, interface between the circuit layers is completed using copper plated through holes uh, that extend through the flexible material. The circuit pattern is imaged, chemically etched, and finally insulated on both sides by applying a top or bottom dielectric cover layer or cover coat. In type three, the type three circuit consists of three or more conductive layers stacked and bonded together with thin dielectric adhesive film layers. The plated through vias are formed following lamination to provide the interconnect between the layers. Now type four is, is, is a little more complex. Now we're getting into rigid flex. The rigid flex can consist of a flexible circuit laminated between two or more layers of the, of the epoxy glass circuit sections with plated through holes for interconnect. The configuration provides flexibility in a portion of the circuit while utilizing rigid portions for the balance of the circuit design uh, and for mounting and interconnecting components. When we um, discussion of base material for flex circuits and rigid flex, substrates for rigid uh, flex circuits are typically developed using processes that are similar to conventional board fabrication. Glass reinforced epoxy and non-reinforced uh, base material specifications are detailed in IPC 4101 and 4104, and they include the polyamid film, polyamid with glass fiber and reinforcement, FR4 epoxy with glass fiber and reinforcement, and BT epoxy with glass fiber reinforcement. It's important to research the various products to choose the one best suited for the design. Uh, the attributes that should be concerned are glass transition temperature, decomposition temperature, reinforcement type, dielectric compound, maximum operating temperatures, and moisture absorption. By the way, the BT uh, laminate material is a blend of epoxy and bismalamide, bismalamide triazine resins. And it's a very, uh, very uh, stable material. The FR4 material noted uh, in the 4101 uh, slash 126, 29, 30, and 31 are uh, developed for lead-free solder processing, uh, reaching temperatures above 400 and 300, I'm sorry, 240 degrees C. It's important to uh, research the various products to choose the one best meeting the design requirements. Uh, things that we have to consider is moisture absorption, fire retardancy, 
electrical properties, mechanical properties, and thermal properties. Polymid film is probably the most common for flex circuits. It's a, it's a very rugged material, has out, outstanding electrical properties, excellent chemical resistance, thermal stability, capability of continuous operations above 225 degrees C, dimensionally stable at high and low temperature, relatively high moisture absorption rate, uh, able to withstand SMT solder process temperatures, costly but the most versatile for electronic packaging. Now I mentioned this uh, moisture absorption. It's, it, it, Polyamide does absorb moisture more rapidly than the, uh, the epoxy-based materials. However, it also expels them easily. So um, that, that's just something to be concerned with if, uh, for some products. Uh, the operation with moisture might, might affect their, their, uh, uh, their stability. As far as surface protection, after we've um, after we process the flex circuit, you, you, we want to protect the, the conductors on the surface. And there's uh, several materials can be used. The cover leg is a dielectric film, uh, similar to the base material. Uh, there's also a cover coat, which is a liquid polymer that's screen printed onto the, the cured, cured and cured using the UV or heat. Liquid photoemission polymers are also available. They're a photosensitive material that is spray or print uh, or flood coated onto the surface and they go through the development process. And then there's a photo image dry film, which is fusion laminated onto the circuit and photo image to furnish access to the land pattern features. In, in looking at the films, um, the plus side, they have excellent dynamic flexibility. Um, the minus side, thickness, uh, will increase and the cost is, is a little more costly depending on the, the application. As far as the uh, pinhole free, uh, that's a plus. Yeah, it is a, a solid material, so there's no chance of pinholes. Uh, requiring, uh, does require a pre-cutting or pre-punching operations before lamination, um, but it has the highest strength, but it is susceptible to misregistration and dimensional change. The uh, photo image polymers uh, have some pluses and minuses as well. Uh, they do offer high pattern resolution, uh, but the flexibility will vary by supplier. Um, on the plus side, it eliminates punching and drilling of access holes, uh, and the cost is moderate, uh, minimum material waste. It enables the precise alignment for exposed features like your land patterns. Uh, but it is very thin and it, it, you may get pinholes on occasion. So it, the pinholes, if they're over a copper conductor, uh, will we'll need some, uh, some touch up of some type. Now the, uh, the photo image drive film uh, is, uh, has high, high pattern resolution as well, but the flexibility again varies with supplier. But it does eliminate the punching and drilling of access holes and uh, basic material cost is high, but the material is, is pinhole free. In considering the fabrication process uh, limits, uh, factors that will define the suppliers and fabrication capability are minimum distance separating the conductors, vias, through holes, and SMT land patterns. Maximum number of conductors routed between a given area or fixed surface features. Number of conductor layers required for flexible and rigid flex portions of the circuit. When we're um, dealing with parallel circuits, uh, we have to consider the path. Uh, the, when, when, you, when the conductor path on the flexible circuit must change directions, the designer must avoid sharp 90 degree turns. Ideal, ideally the conductor paths will des be designed with a nested, a chamfer or a generous radius. Uh, multiple conductor paths noted in parallel, uh, routed in parallel, should also maintain uniform spacing with progressively larger radii from the center axis as compared. The CAD uh, tools, by the way, are specifically developed for designing flexible circuits usually have this capability built in.
parallel circuit routing um, is, 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 is an issue. We wanna make sure the product is, is, is reliable and we don't want any sharp corners that might promote uh, tearing. So here's another example furnished by Allflex illustrating a number of key features that will enhance the circuit survivability. A common uh, fatigue uh, potential location is in the transition of the narrow circuit geometry to a larger feature, uh, connector, mounting pads, et cetera. Uh, reinforcement at that interface can be as simple as supplying a teardrop shaped uh, transition between the narrow and wider conductor features. Uh, for holes furnishing, furnished for mounting uh, pinhole components, it is good design practice to make the mounting pad area as large as possible to maximize the adhesion area during the soldering process. Determining conductor density and the, and the routing uh, area requirement of the flexible portion of the circuit will depend on the number of width of signal conductors, number and width of signal conductors. For both single and two metal flex, uh, the overall width of the base material must also provide adequate surface area for cover layer uh, film bonding. In other words, you have to have some edge clearance to make sure that the cover layer film has a surface to bond to. For each single and two metal flex circuit, the base material also provides adequate uh, area for the for the bonding. The table furnishes recommendations for feature size and spacing criteria based on the copper foil thickness. In regard to the conductor width and space between conductors, the column using 17 micron thick copper can generally ex be expected the fabrication to use using the subtractive etching process to furnish conductor width and space of about uh, 0.13 millimeters or roughly five mils. The general rule for conductors to dielectric edge is a, is a minimum of 0.75 millimeters uh, or, or uh, about 30 thousandths. Um, but when possible, a wider area would be preferred to make sure that the circuit provides an ample surface uh, to ensure reliable adhesion again. As far as conductor clearance requirements uh, for the holes and the copper features, uh, 0.5 millimeters uh, or 20 mils uh, clearance is, is, a great, is greatly uh, recommended. Hole to edge distance in a flexible circuit it should be maintained to a maximum 1.3 millimeters or 50 mils uh, distance because of the exterior edge of the flex circuit outline and the outer edges of the interior holes and cutouts. When larger distances can be maintained, it, it will contribute to assuring a more reliable product. The IPC 2223 section design standard for flexible circuits makes uh, key recommendations uh, for flex and rigid flex. Um, it's, it's con the corners and, and uh, part profile should be about uh, 1.5 millimeters or 60 mils. However, a larger hole or radii will make a more reliable part. Uh, and you know, the idea is to minimize tearing on the, on, the, uh, on the corners. So this is an example showing radiuses in the corners, chamfers on corners, uh, relief uh, where the flex circuit uh, must uh, be exercised and you see the uh, tear restraints um, they are just to uh, give a little more strength in those corners so that when this material flexes it doesn't stress that corner and, and create little tears even though the material is tough it will tear if if, uh, if exercised beyond its uh, strength limit Conductor routing in the bin zones. Well, maximum uh, dynamic flex life and reliability uh, conductors in the board area should adhere to the following considerations. Conductors should be routed perpendicular to the bend area. Conductors should be evenly spaced across the bend area. Do not apply or plate additional metals in the bend area. 
conductors should be should maintain a uniform width and uh, in the bend area and do not place SMP components or play through hole vias in the bend area. As far as the uh, uh, corners, we're dealing with corners. Uh, we want to avoid sharp 90 degree uh, inside corners because there's another area where flex, where tears could uh, begin. So to reduce cracking uh, on 90 degree inside corners, the flex film of the flex film, a minimum radius profile should be in the range of 0 0.27, 0 0.75 millimeters. However, a larger radio, radius or a recessed radius is, is in the right hand exhibit um, would be preferred. When it's necessary for the flex circuit to, con to uh, conform to that sharp corner, that right, that right uh, detail is probably uh, preferred. Uh, that way you get it, if it has to go into a sharp or meet with a sharp corner, there's, then there's no stress on the flex. As far as tear restraints uh, for narrow slot features, both narrow and wide slot features in the flexible circuit should terminate at a radio typical of those shown. In the circuit area to be subjected to repeated flexing, it is recommended to retain a small pattern of uh, copper foil for further reinforcement against tearing. Incorporating the slit feature within the circuit, um, this example from at Altram uh, exhibits a narrow slot within the circuit path. And so it's, it, what happens, you, you start squeezing things down. It, uh, we don't want to have the uh, a condition where if it's a metal object coming through that slot to have any chance of uh, interfering with the conductor path. And so uh, there is a, uh, you know, just some uh, minimal, minimum uh, limitations we should uh, add to that. You know, 1.5 millimeter hole at each uh, end it will provide strength so, so that it resist, resist tearing. Uh, and um, it could be, uh, it, it could be, add, add some uh, strength to the uh, end product. And of course, maintaining clearance to the conductor from the hole it still has to be considered. So we've got uh, about 20 mil clearance shown here, and that would be a minimum uh, target to do that. Okay. Just to recap uh, this, this part, um, the minimum radius on inside corners of the part profile should be 1.5 millimeter or, or six mils. However, a larger radii will make a more reliable part and be more con uh, resistant to tearing. Additional materials may be retained to add to the inside radius to provide increased tear resistance. The minimum distance between exterior edges of, of the uh, uh, and the edge or of interior non-plated through holes, um, cut cutout should be no less than 0.5 millimeters or two mils. Uh, strain relief slots should be should be terminated 1.5 millimeter or or point, 0.06 uh, diameter holes. Okay, so these are just kind of key key things to consider. We get into uh, issue of joining uh, the flex and rigid section of the board. Okay, we, uh, we have to add a strain relief of sorts so that there's no flex, no, no uh, stress on the flex circuit itself in, in bending. So usually a small bead of polymer is applied at the transition between the flex and the rigid and that will minimize the physical stress at that interface. The strain relief material can be flexible epoxy, acrylic, RTV, silicon, uh, polysulfide com uh, compound, etc. Uh, the strain relief um, horizontal dimension X may range from one millimeter to 2.5 millimeters. To avoid compromising the integrity of the plated through hole on the rigid uh, flex circuit, the hole locations must be set back from the edge of the rigid section. Uh, the 3.18 millimeter plus one half the hole diameter is the setback. 
that will avoid uh, interference from the cover layer uh, protrusion where the flex material enters uh, the rigid flex material. In regard, in regard to bend, uh, bends and folds, uh, the generally accepted guidelines for a minimum bend radius for a 90 degree bend to install product is a fully bond of a fully bonded circuit uh, depends on how many copper layers you're dealing with if it's a single side copper a 10 to 1 radius is is uh, specified the same is true for a double sided but if you're, you get into multi layer they're asking for 20 to 1 uh, that's a but that's that's for a bend to install it's a static application it's not a, a, a dynamic application it's just one time bend As far as routing do's and don'ts, um, for maximum dynamic flex life, the reliability of conductors in the bend areas should be adhered to the following conditions. Conductors should be routed perpendicular to the bend area. Conductors should be evenly spaced across the bend area. Do not apply or plate additional metals in the bend area. Conductors should maintain a uniform width in the bend area. Do not place SMT components. That's a repeat of what we talked about before, but it's, it's something we've got to keep in mind that we want to keep that flexible section uh, free of, of defect, cracking, etc. Now, if we're, we have um, occasionally where these circuits actually have to fold, fold them up back onto themselves, the copper conductors in the fold area should always be on the inside surface of the fold. Uh, these types of folds are recommended for one time fold only uh, of a single sided circuit. If the copper foil is on two sides, a flexible circuit, copper on the uh, outside area of the bend must be, uh, must be cleared. In other words, we can't have conductors on both sides for a fold condition or because one side will crack while the other side is compressed. And it, it's a, it could cause a, a reliability issue all, all, all together. Folds uh, should be kept uniform and designed to follow the surface of the package and are only recommended for single-sided flex or double-sided flex um, if, if the circuit paths are removed, okay? What happens is if you have a circuit folding a circuit and some opposing copper on the opposite side, it, uh, it almost appears to be like an I-beam. Uh, so it, it, something's got to give and it's usually the side opposite uh, uh, the inside of the fold. And so a uh, forming tool uh, uh, is with a known radius is commonly employed to control this, this bend. Um, crease if required shall be formed only one time and shall not be opened again, and it should be bonded in place to ensure that the fold will not ex be exercised. Uh, bend guidelines for dynamic applications are a little, little different. Um, the dynamic uh, application requires a repeated bending uh, to 90 degrees from flat. Uh, we have for single side on 100 to one uh, radius, for a, a double side, it'd be 150 to one, and multi-layer flexes should not be considered for dynamic applications. Just talking about two-sided flex again, um, the multiple conductors are, are routed in the same direction on both surfaces of the flexible base material. The circuit paths on each side in the circuit in the bend zone must be offset from the other to prevent stress cracking of the copper foil. When conductors are positioned directly opposite from one another, uh, opposing sides of flexible circuit, flexibility is significantly reduced. Additionally, when the flexible circuit requires to be installed in a product with the right angle bend, the copper conduct, uh, conductors on the outside of the bend will likely micro, uh, cause micro cracks that can cause uh, intermittent opens in the circuit during operation. In regard to EMI, um, uh, we can, we can uh, 
provide shielding. It could be another layer of, of copper that's, that's etched. The pattern conductive layer may be uh, added to provide effective EMI shielding. The cross-hatched cross pattern helps to maintain flexibility. A conductive silver inks can also be printed to provide shielding, but the, this process may not be suitable for dynamic flexing applications. This is an example of cross hatching. The advantage of this technique is that it has the least negative effect on loss. Disadvantage is the technique of the technique is that it results in uh, the most degradation of EMI performance, especially at high frequencies. The following guidelines are suggested by 2223. Sharp corners on signal routing should be avoided because uh, they are potential points of failure when the materials bends. In general, uh, small openings in the cross hatch plane will offer improved impedance consistency and is recommended that the designer and fabricator jointly understand the requirements for limiting signal loss, impedance tolerance, and electromagnetic interference. So we'll move into part two. We're talking about component selection, land pattern development. Well, flexible circuits may be designed uh, to simply provide passive interconnect between two points. Uh, many uh, will be more an, an active category and include several component functions. Uh, the rigid flex circuit, uh, typically it's shown uh, here for, uh, from PSI in Bloomingdale, uh, Bloomington. Minnesota. It exhibits a reasonably complex high density surface mount component populated on the rigid portions with the uh, flexible materials are embedded within the material furnishing interface between uh, two rigid sections and provide three small flex circuit uh, extensions uh, for interconnect to other locations. In regards to uh, Resistors capacitors, the land pattern geometry for passive components must provide surface area that will enable 100% terminal contact. The terminal at each end of the component are identified as toe and heel. Uh, they provide uh, uh, an outer surface. Um, the, I'm sorry, the toe end will provide the, uh, uh, the, the, the interface uh, while the inboard edge of the terminal referred to as the heel. Uh, upper example exhibits a target condition where the land pattern protrudes a short distance from the component terminal end. Uh, toe protrusion enables solder filleting for both physical strength and solder joint assessment. The center example exhibits a, a slight shift in the component to land pattern surface, although the heel remains on the circuit pattern um, uh, surface, it meets uh, general 100% contact requirements where the uh, if the land pattern spacing uh, is too wide, the term will end up overlapping uh, circuit area and that is not acceptable. And this is the... Uh, example I meant to try to explain. Okay, um, the main thing is that the component aligns up on the pad and uh, does not shift and, and overlap into, the, into that uh, non-conductive area. Um, a lot of leaded components are still part of the process and the small outline I see uh, where used, uh, we have to consider their land pattern. Now on the rigid side of, of the board, the land pattern is pretty much what you find in IPC 7351 or, or 7093. Um, but uh, I've, I've, I've uh, showing this typical uh, uh, example here, showing the uh, using, this is a JEDEC uh, SOIC land pattern. And uh, for the 8, 14, 16 uh, narrow package, and then the wider package is 8, 14, 16, and even 20, 24, 28, 23, Those are the wider package. And then there's an even wider version that's uh, uh, over, uh, well, 0.5, that's an inch, 0.51. So that's over a half inch wide. So 
these are just recommendations uh, to give you scale. This would be on the rigid board section. We'll talk about what when you mount uh, surface mount parts on flexible circuits. Uh, we'll, we'll show you a slightly different uh, land pattern geometry. Quad flat packs uh, with the fine pitch lead frame, uh, they, they're difficult on, uh, on flex, but on, uh, on rigid sections, this, this geometry works pretty well. It's uh, very similar to what you'd find in the IPC standard. Um, uh, this, this shows 0 0.5, 0 0.4, and 0 0.3 millimeter pitch. Uh, those were the, uh, the primary standards uh, called fine pitch, but they're uh, compared to some of the products we're seeing today uh, they're, they're just average, I believe. Quad flat pack uh, could be land pattern geometry, uh, must have an adequate area for solder interface. And uh, there's a minimum toe protrusion that's recommended at uh, about eight mils. It'll, put, it'll enable solder wetting assessment. Uh, the uh, the heel is where the strength of that particular solder joint is, and that's uh, recommended about the 16 thousandths uh, or 0 0.40, uh, and that allows inspection of the solder. As far as the height of the solder, that's something that uh, that's going to be assessed by the assembly people. The target is typically one times the thickness of the lead. The minimum requirement in JEDEC and in I IEC is a minimum of half one half the lead thickness. Bottom terminal uh, QFN term, uh, components, um, the primary interface feature of the QFN package are one, the device IO, and two is the die attach pad. A robust solder connection at the IO terminal, terminal locations is important to, us, to ensure adequate functional performance of the device. Uniform interface with the die attach pad is managed uh, to, to manage thermal dissipation uh, will require uh, perhaps a pattern of uh, solder paste to avoid uh, the part from rocking when uh, going through reflow. In general rule, the general rule for land pattern geometry will be, uh, e will be equal to the exposed terminal dimensions with the exception of the toe protrusion. The slight protrusion, uh, about 0 0.20 millimeters, 0 0.40 mil, enables those responsible for the assembly of the product to have visual access to verify solder process uniformity. Additionally, the designer may require be required to develop a unique solder mask pattern over the dial attach pad to prevent solder pooling during the reflow solder process. If the solder is unevenly drawn into that pool, the package will not remain planar with the board surface. IPC 7094 uh, furnishes a number of process proven solutions and, and guidance in developing solder mass pattern and via layout for thermal transfer. I mentioned these, these IPC standards because they are, they are really uh, informative and they've been developed by professionals that are experienced in this work. Uh, IPC standards, are, by the way, are not developed by some staff member in, in an office. They're developed by the members that actually do the work uh, in their in their in their uh, contributing companies. To ensure the robust design and to minimize any possible solder bridging during the uh, board assembly, the 7094, IPC and the 7094 recommends adjustment of the land pattern geometry to maintain this uh, eight mil minimum terminal to terminal uh, uh, and, and terminal to die attach pad clearance. The die attach pad functions as, the, as a platform to support the die during the wire bond process. So it's, uh, it, and it, it's typically exposed to the bottom surface of the component. In regard to uh, ray package semiconductors, um, they pretty much uh, replaced all the lead frame package uh, in, in today's uh, high density products. There's several benefits for array terminal packaging. Improved performance due to package interference, interconnect capability, rugged construction when compared to fine pitch lead frame devices. 
And I, array IC packaging has proved to be far more assembly process friendly when compared to the lead frame variations. As a general rule, um, we refer to the JEDEC and JEDA uh, outline standards. And they're all, all these standards are in hard millimeter dimensions. So anytime that uh, we're trying to create our library, we, we, we really have to um, design that in, in millimeters to make sure that there's no uh, accumulation of, um, of tolerance, okay? Terminal pitch is um, the E uh, and terminal diameter B for the fine pitch and die size package families are relatively constant from 0.5 millimeters through 0.8 millimeters, except for uh, there's uh, some limited products that are actually furnished with 0.75 millimeter pitch. The 0.75 millimeter pitch uh, die package uh, has already, was already in production when the standard was made. And so, um, it was allowed. Nominal bulb and bump diameter shown in the table allow the supplier a degree of flexibility, enabling three optional diameters. And I, I note that because that will have play a part in our land pattern development. The larger diameters will furnish a higher standoff height for better access for post assembly cleaning and operation. The smaller diameter will contribute to minimizing overall package profile. Okay, in part three, we'll be looking at uh, assembly, uh, DFM for assembly processing. Surface mount technology offers the user a means of efficiently producing electronic products in high volume with robotic assembly processing. The automated inline assembly systems, typical of that shown, um, uh, here and uh, materials developed for attaching the surface mount components have continually evolved to meet the growing demand of high quality and high volume manufacturing capability. So we'll be discussing the SMT assembly process, the preparation of SMT assembly, land pattern reinforcement, conductor to land interf interf interface and SMT component area support. This is a typical surface mount line. Uh, surface mount technology is a manufacturing process that through application of, of a wide range of small outline components provides capability to design smaller outline components. Uh, beginning at the first stage of the assembly for depositing solder and then sequentially through uh, component placement operations, camera systems are, are utilized. First to precisely align the product board for stencil printing. And next is to, uh, to position the components accurately on top of the land patterns. In both solder printing and component placement operations, the cameras will utilize a small target feature that, that will be each, it etched into the board's outer circuit pattern to in, ensure both alignment and position. The fiducial target is what we call them. The fiducial target features should be located within each of the circuit section or localized SMT terminal area. Fiducial targets are designed for assembly processing should be positioned within the final circuit outline. Uh, the use of the circuit fiducials is common technique for producing the, if, the effects of variable shrinkage uh, to avoid the, the effects of, uh, of shrinkage and, uh, and any process distortion in the flexible material. Optimum fiducial is a solid, uh, solid circle of uh, from 0.25 to 0.50 in diameter. Um, this will enable access to locating uh, the fiducial targets. We have to clear it of solder mask. No plating is, is actually required on the fiducial, um, but if there's plating, we have to make sure that it maintains a flat surface. Fiducial locations must be clear um, of the panel or circuit outline edges uh, by a minimum of 4.75, which is uh, 0.187. This allows uh, clearance for um, any uh, conveyor systems. The 
uh, as far as the primary purpose for fiducials, the fiducial targets assist in defining XY con, uh, coordinates for each component. Uh, the SMT devices are aligned, placed using uh, the body center as a zero zero reference point for placement coordinates that should be within the circuit outline. Providing uh, fiducials on the flex circuit enables precise SMT component placement as well as dimensional sort of verification. Uh, multiple fiducial targets located locations will provide a tighter tolerance within each datum zone or terminal area. Multiple fiducial locations should relax the tolerance between unrelated areas uh, of the circuit when, uh, without compromising subsequent installation of components in each, each termination area. When multiple component mounting sites are separated by excessive distance, it is suggested that multiple fiducial features be provided for each component mounting zone. Uh, the use of multiple datum features is common technique uh, for reducing or eliminating the effects of variable shrinkage or process distortion in the flexible material. Although minimum of two fiducial targets is, 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 uh, and diagonal corners are required, I always have put in three uh, to create an XY coordinate position. When we're dealing with a complex flexible material, uh, we like to have it so we can handle it in, a, in a, an automated system with uniform uh, uniform shape. And it, of course, with uh, as shown here with the backing, it allows the product to be uh, run through from co conveyor to conveyor on that automated system without, um, without distortion. And so the backing is temporary and uh, it's not something that's going to stay with it past the assembly process. So the, film, the flex film circuit will be uh, uh, will be, you know, the backed material will allow uh, solder printing, component placement, and go right through reflow solder, uh, retaining the odd shaped individual circuits, uh, and maybe an FR4 backing material. That's, uh, it's, a, it's a common technique for supporting uh, the product through assembly. And then and when, they, when they singulate the part from the panel, they, um, it, the, the circuit's ready for, for uh, shipment. Retaining uh, several individual circuit pat pat units in FR back enable efficient transfer of the circuit units by conveyor from one machine to the other. The panel will require locating global fiducial targets near the uh, panel edge to facilitate precise stencil alignment for printing the solder paste onto the, onto the lamp pattern. Okay. Okay. And now we're getting the component placement um, on flex. Uh, land pattern features for the surface mount device are susceptible to peeling or lifting when excessive heat is applied during rework or repair activity. Uh, heat applied during the initial solder assembly may not be a concern, but the heat applied to desolder and resolder components can weaken the copper adhesion at the base dielectric film. Uh, resulting in pad lift. A process that had proved successful in minimizing uh, copper foil separation when exposed to high temperatures is extending the land pattern geometry to enable thin polymer film cover layer material to overlap the land pattern features. Cover layer film enables containment of the solder SMT uh, as, as, during SMT reflow, um, and it also uh, provides adhesion reinforcement to the land pattern connecting the conductor pattern. Here's an example of a, a part that's um, possibly would uh, lift from the from the surface if heated. To minimize the potential for pad lift, 
component to uh, drain repair, the SMP land pattern geometry should extend uh, at least 0.25 millimeter uh, underneath the uh, the cover lay material, and that way it it, uh, it doesn't have the won't have the tendency to to uh, lift during the heating. Just a little more just a little more reinforcement. Uh, same is true with the lead frame devices. We we overlap the ends. In this case, we've got a uh, a gang uh, opening uh, because these these lamp patterns are very close together. And, and for uh, cover lay material, it's, it's difficult to hold a very uh, close um, clearance to pad. So we we often will have a gang opening. In regard to uh, BGA. Uh, we have uh, two variations. One is where the uh, cover lay will be clear of the land um, or one that overlaps the land. But if it overlaps the land, then it has to over, um, then, but the, the opening has to still maintain that, that A dimension, whatever is defined. Um, we have to maintain the same diameter, even though it's overlapped. Because of the polymer film uh, material, it's it's difficult to deal with the uh, very fine pitch devices. So in that case, they also have a gang opening uh, and clear. However, uh, we're starting to find more companies moving towards laser imaging, and with laser imaging, we can create uh, openings that uh, in that material, at least the photo imageable material, uh, to uh, to to make sure that you've got. Uh, coverage as well as separation between land patterns. So the, ex the example, um, this photo image liquid fat and dry film material are uh, vi viable alternatives for coating. Um, this process can retain a significant amount of polymer between or onto the edge of, of the land pattern. And uh, it is something that, uh, again, you'd, you'd consider, you'd discuss this with the supplier on what, uh, what the design rules might be. As far as conductor to land, when uh, components are soldered onto the land um, features, uh, we have to make, we have to think about the stress at that joint. So the thing we want to do is taper taper that entrance so that the stress is minimized. Okay. So here's some examples of uh, of the different features and how the mask would uh, overlap. If you have a through hole in a in a small via, uh, that that teardrop also contributes to strengthening uh, that product as well as uh, accommodating mis misalignment when the hole goes through, we won't, uh, won't have any breakout. Now we get into uh, reinforcement. Typical reinforcement is it in areas where you're mounting components, you could use the polyamid film uh, for buildup, uh, unclad epoxy, glass laminate, uh, you can use a paper-based epoxy laminate and even a metal heat sink. Here's, uh, type two product uh, that uh, shows uh, components mounted on one side and on the opposite side, we've, we've reinforced that area with the additional layer of polyamide film. It just adds a little more stiffness to um, take the stress off to the solder joints. We can also look at uh, reinforcement with rigid materials, especially in areas that are gonna be exercised as shown with a connector where the connector has to be uh, extracted or replaced several times, it just strengthens that area so the solder joint is not stressed. For surface mount areas, having a rigid uh, backing under that area will also reduce any stress that would be um, transferred to the solder joint. And, uh, and it's, um, all three of those operations uh, are, uh, are quite common. So just to wrap things up, uh, we wanna utilize your supplier's knowledge and experience. Uh, base material selection is, is key. Um, the recommendation for surface finish and coatings, they will also tell you what the preferred conductor width and spacing would be to get the best price and the best uh, reliability of, out of a product. Minimum uh, through holes and via sizes can be, uh, can be supplied. Supplier uh, user design review cycles are very, really important. We wanna discuss the application and use environment uh, before we start. Establish a timeline for development. Determine flex circuit and rigid flex constraints. Plan a practical design review cycle. And that uh, concludes my talk. I, I'm, uh, I hope that uh, 
gain some. I think we have some time for some questions. Uh, so Lucy, can you take over that part? 